Hello and welcome to your Urban Connection. Remember, this is the channel that is often imitated, but is never duplicated. Now, you know, ladies and gentlemen, as a podcaster, I talk about a lot of things here on this show. Some of them are pleasant. Some of them are not pleasant. But all are meant to inform and educate you, the viewing audience, to this show. And today, I want to talk about something that has always been near and dear to my heart. And I don't take a lot of pleasure in addressing this topic. But what has happened recently has brought me to the point where I can no longer avoid talking about this issue. And the issue that I'm going to address today is domestic violence. And I feel that I have to address it because I think too many of us, both male and female, but primarily females, don't take the issue of domestic violence seriously, and certainly not seriously enough. Now, let me just tell you about a couple of things that have really upset me and pushed me to the point where I have to address this issue on today. Within the last 30 to 45 days, I have seen more than my share of enough domestic violence involving males putting their hands on and creating violence against females. In most of these cases, it's a boyfriend and girlfriend. Oftentimes, it's husband and wife. But the two incidents that I'm referring to right now, number one, there was a 19-year-old young college student here in Wichita that was, I think, about three to four months pregnant and was found dead in the trunk of her, 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 trunk of her boyfriend's car at the hands of, allegedly, her boyfriend. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, two days ago, in New York City, an NBA player, basketball player, had went on a trip. He plays for the Houston Rockets. And he had a former WNBA player as his girlfriend. She had played for the Indiana, and I don't remember the name of the WNBA, but first she played for Indiana, and then she later on went to play for another team. So anyhow, this, this uh, Houston Rockets NBA player went to an event in New York City. Yeah. He went and they were checked into a, a, a hotel there in New York City. I think it's a, a four or five star hotel. At some point in the evening, he left the female in the hotel room and went out to party, I guess, or went out for a night on the town. And allegedly what happened was he came back home or back to the hotel at 6 o'clock in the morning. Now, apparently the girlfriend was upset that he went out and spent the entire night. So she locked him out. So she locked him out and he couldn't get in. 
So he summoned the hotel security to let him into the room. Upon entering the room, he found his girlfriend asleep. He was angry about being locked out of the room. So what does he do? Allegedly, he attacks the girl in her sleep and began assaulting her, beating her with closed fists. Not only did he assault her with closed fists and opening up what's described as an inches long gash above her eye and then began to choke her with his hands with all of the strength that he could muster. And the girl woke up and she couldn't breathe. She was having difficulty breathing. She was being choked, strangled. And he strangled her so hard, ladies and gentlemen, that he fractured a vertebrae in her neck. And he only stopped when the girl somehow or another managed to get out of the room and ran down the hallway of the hotel, blood streaming from her face, and she is yelling and screaming for help. Hotel employees found her, rescued her, and called the police. Called the ambulance, the EMS. She was transferred to the hospital where she was described as having suffered a broken bone in her neck. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here is my point that I want to make. Domestic violence is a serious issue. It is probably one of the most serious issues that we undertake in our society between males and females. But I want to tell you females something. And I get so disgusted by looking at the internet, watching television, reading newspapers, and finding out about these females who allow, and I'm going to use that word, allow themselves to become violent victims of violent sexual assault and domestic assault. And let me tell you what I mean. I want you ladies to understand, and I keep saying this, I say this, and I say this. I had a television show for 15 years, ladies and gentlemen, and it seemed like every year I had to address this issue. You females, and in particular, you young females, you have got to get a grip on who the hell you're getting yourself involved with. Now, I want to tell you something. If your parents will not address this issue with you beforehand, if your female friends will not address this issue with you beforehand, if your male friends, if your female or female relatives will not discuss this issue with you and give you some important advice, I will. First off, you must, first of all, know who the hell you're getting involved with. You cannot just go out there and throw yourself at some guy because he's good looking, because he makes a lot of money, because he's a star athlete, because he makes a lot of money as a businessman, because of the fact that you've heard that, hey, he's a good lover. None of that matters if you're allowing yourself to be a female punching bag 
for some guy that is suffering from uh, mental anguish and mental anger and refuses to go seek anger management from a psychiatrist or a therapist or something because you have got to put in his head from day one I don't care how I feel about you. I don't care how good you look to me. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how good the sex is. If you ever put your hands on me, that's the end of it. It's over. If you do it the first time, I guarantee you, you will never get the second chance to put me in a position of where my life my livelihood is in harm's way with you. Now, once you've said that, you've got to stand behind that. You cannot let a man hit you, assault you uh, uh, physically, and then allow him to come back when he pleads, oh, baby, I'm so sorry. Oh, I didn't mean it. Oh, I'm, I promise I won't do it again. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Just give me another chance. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't work that way. It has not worked that way. It will not work that way. Because once you allow him to come back, you are, in effect, condoning that type of behavior. That's what you're doing. And it's going to continue. It's never just a one-time thing unless you stop it. Because if he knows that he can get away with it, he is going to do it again. Some choose to use this as a method of control. Some do this when they're under the influence of some type of substance. And some do it out of mental anguish or some type of mental uh, defect. But regardless of why they do it, you can only allow them to do it one time. Now, you cannot go back. And sometimes I hear you women talk about, well, well they say, well, why didn't you leave him? Why didn't leave because we have kids? That's not an issue. What happens when you are in the hospital or possibly in the graveyard and he's not going to take care of the kids? So what are you doing? You've not only put yourself in harm's way, but you're putting your kids in a situation where they will grow up without you or him. You, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to learn. You've got to learn how to protect yourself. Now, you cannot. It's been proven, ladies and gentlemen, time and time again. Let me give you a couple of examples. The incident we talk about with the gentleman putting his girl, killing her and putting her in the trunk of the car. Do you think that's the first time that he's ever put hands on the woman? I doubt it very seriously. And then we take the case with the NBA ball player. There's evidence, proven evidence, that this was not the first time that he's been involved with this woman for domestic violence, for physical assault. As a matter of fact, there's evidence allegedly that he even used his automobile at one time to intentionally smash into an automobile that she was driving. Now, why in the hell would she stay with the guy with this kind of attitude, with this kind of mentality, and with this type of anger situation, with this type of mental stability or instability? Why would she do it? I'm going to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. You might think that he loves you. But I will tell you, he has a hell of a way of showing you if that's what he's putting you through. 
if that's what he's doing to you, if that's his way of showing you that he loves you, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't need that kind of love. And I don't accept that kind of love. And I say this because I'm sick and tired, as I said before, of looking and seeing domestic violence that includes deadly force and deadly physicality that normally leaves the female the victim. I'm sick and tired of it. But you know what? You have to learn to listen. You have to learn to take this issue seriously because if not, it oftentimes becomes deadly serious. Let me say that again. If you don't take this issue seriously the first time, it often becomes deadly serious after that. Because I guarantee you, if you don't put a stop to it, after the first time, you're setting yourself up to be the very next victim. Now, here's what I want you to understand. <clears throat> there are resources. If he will not seek anger management to deal with his anger, his mental anguish, you know, let's put it this way. If you are in a marriage situation and you're having issues with communication, issues with uh, infidelity of different things, you don't hesitate to ask him to go to a marriage counselor, right? So why is it that you're involved with that same gentleman and he's using you as a female punching bag and you refuse to ask him to get anger management to deal with this? Because you won't deal with it. But you have to let him know that you won't deal with it. And you don't deal with it by giving in when he says, oh, baby, I love you. And I promise you I won't do that again. I promise you. He brings you a dozen roses after he's beat your butt, black your eyes, knocked out your teeth, and blooded your nose. Ask yourself. Did he bring you any flowers prior to that? No. He wants to show you the good side after he's beaten your ass. And you are just as much responsible for that behavior when you allow him to come back because you're only asking for more. You're only telling him that I condone what you did. Now, I don't want to hear this stuff about the sex is good. I stay with him because of sex. You can find good sex on every corner. Sex that is good enough to keep you living. Sex that is good enough to get you pregnant, if that's what you want. Sex that does not bring along with it fisticuffs, physicality, physical harm to your body. And don't think for one minute that you can change him. You cannot. Only he can change him. And the sooner you learn that, the better off you will be. You see, I want to address also the incidents that we're talking about basically involve younger men, men in their early 20s, early to mid 20s. Case in Houston, the NBA player is 23 years old. The gentleman here in Wichita was in his 20s. I'm not sure exactly what what age, but 
All I'm saying to you is, I'm talking about you women, but the men do not escape either because somebody knew about this guy's mental anguish before you met him because they display it at home. And if it's not addressed, they display it at school. And if it's not addressed, they display it at a nightclub or at a party or any time they're around other people because they're they've got a high temper and i guarantee you some point at some point in time regardless of what their surroundings are regardless of where they're at something is going to trigger that temper and they're going to display their angry side that they are not making any attempt to control. So somebody knew it, but everybody's brushed it aside. Oh, he's just, you know. Now, if that person has an addiction, somebody knows it. And sometimes you females know it. But you don't attempt to address it because you think you love him and you think he loves you. Well, that's not what I call love, ladies and gentlemen. You don't put your hands on a female unless it's in a passionate way. Unless you are embracing her, you are holding her, you are hugging her, or you're being passionate with her, but you don't do it in a physical manner that can only lead to violence. So I want you women to understand, if you don't take this seriously, do me a favor and do you a favor. Go visit one of these homes or one of these businesses that address and accept female victims of domestic violence. Go look and see what you'll find. You will find women who have done just the opposite of what I'm telling you and instead of putting a halt to this, in the beginning, they keep coming back, letting him come back, coming back, letting him come back. And each time, it ends in the same manner. She makes a trip to one of these homes because she suffered another beating. She suffered another episode of being a, a female punching bag. And that's exactly what you're headed for and what you will receive if you don't take control. And you don't take control by accepting that kind of behavior as normal. Because it is not normal. It is abnormal. No self-respecting male beats up physically a female, a self-respecting female, because she won't allow it. She won't allow it. And he knows it. And if you allow it, it's going to continue to happen. This is a serious issue. It is an issue that is not discussed enough. It is not taken seriously enough by the adult, a supposedly adult population. You know, you've got to look and see. Ladies and gentlemen, this kind of stuff leads to more deaths 
And you can, I'm telling you, you can look on the internet every day. You can look at the papers every day. You can watch TV every day. And you will see another female has been the victim of domestic violence. And more often than not, she's been the victim of a deadly domestic violence at the hands of some non-self-respecting male. And let me tell you, it doesn't make any difference what race you are. It doesn't make any difference what age you are. It doesn't make any difference what side of town you live on. It doesn't make any difference what state you live in. It happens all over. And it happens almost every day. And I can never say this enough, and I will never stop saying this. You females are the ones that have the power to stop it. But only if you will use it. It's like anything else. Having power that you don't use is of no value to you. And if you don't put a higher price and a bigger value on your life than to allow some anger, mentally unstable male to abuse you, to physically harm you, and harm that can and often does lead to your death, you are less of a woman than he is a man. And you are allowing him to destroy you. Now, you know, what I'm saying, I can tell you right now, to some of the women that are watching this program who are victims right now of domestic violence, of physical assault, everything I've said is going to go right in one ear and write out the other. And you will continue to do what you've been doing. And that is allowing him to put his hands on you, to cause you bodily harm, to cause you maybe a trip to the hospital, only to have him come back and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I won't do it again. How many times has he said that? How many times have you allowed him to come back after hearing him say that? And how many times will you allow him to come back before it's too late? Before it's too late. Before your kids that you have that you think are causing you to stay with him are left without a mom and a dad. Because more than likely, he will be in jail and you will be in the ground. Take heed to this message. I take, take great pleasure in being the one that will tell you what nobody else will tell you. Be in control of your body, yourself, and your destiny. Stop 
getting involved and staying involved with men that show you love, not emotionally, not passionately, but physicality, through physicality, through bodily harm. That's not love. That's not even puppy love. Take heed. Thanks for watching.